I had an encounter not long after I experienced the awakening. <clears throat> I was in a waiting room somewhere and this huge guy came in. I call, uh, 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 um, compared to him, I'm just a, this puny little guy sitting there and there he planted himself in front of me and, and obviously enjoying his power. I, I can't remember what he wanted. He wanted something. Uh, and I could sense the that sense of presence intensifying, and I just look, and he said a few things, and as, and suddenly he became extremely disconcerted because there was no attempt on my part to put up any kind of defense or compete in any way, and he got de deflated like a balloon and didn't know what to say or do anymore. That's an interesting phenomenon. So the important thing for you is, in any situation, be in touch with that inherent power of presence. Because ultimately, that is the power of now. Ultimately, the power, the now, is the presence, and the presence is you. So, and ultimately, you are, in its deepest sense, you are the now, because the now is the presence, and this is why the, I speak of the power of now. The power of now is also the power of you, and, the, and, and not the not the personal you. But the you that is that remains and never was not connected and always is connected and always is an intrinsic part of universal power itself, universal consciousness itself, the one, the one consciousness that underlies all phenomena, the one consciousness of which all phenomena are only a temporary expression. So there's enormous power there. Whether how that manifests in this world is a secondary thing. Perhaps it only manifests as an emanation that comes through you, or it flows into something that you you do or create. And it's a great thing to feel that power, which is not comparative. Because you know that everybody else is also a temporary expression of that inherent power, although mo 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 most people don't know it. It's, it's the famous guy that I spoke of in the, perhaps the power of now, he's sitting on, the beggar is sitting on his, his old box, for his many years asking for little coins and then somebody says, what's inside that box? I've never looked. And it's filled with gold. And I gave that analogy or parable at the beginning of the power of now. So that is discovering that power in you. And all, for most people, they, they're looking for little substitutes to give them a sense of who they are. And of course, this is the reason why uh, it is not unusual for humans to awaken spiritually, to awaken to who they are in their essence, when either one big thing or many things that they had derived their identity from good looks, physical strengths, possessions, abilities to do this or that, recognition, social, um, status in society, those things, and suddenly 
they lose these things, or they lose one big thing that was, that was the main, that, that gave them the, their sense of identity, the one main thing that gave them their sense of identity, and that's gone. And that's, of course, would be, as first is terrible suffering, and then it can force a human to, to that deeper place, because you've, out here, you, 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 unless you quickly, the ego m might make an attempt to quickly rebuild some mind-made identity by creating another narrative. That's possible too. Not, not every human who loses, uh, who experiences great loss necessarily goes to that deeper place, but the potential is there. So it could be a sports person who is great, who is great master of or some sports, and then he or she has an accident, can never participate in it in that activity again, and that did get, gave him or her the sense of identity. It at first leads to terrible suffering, and then potentially there is a deepening there, and the essence. Then you are forced into your essence. There's a medieval image of Fortuna. Fortuna is the goddess of good luck or fortune. It goes back to Roman times. That shows the fickleness of things, the transient nature of all the things of this world, which are the things that people identify with, it gives them their sense of identity, their, their self-esteem. And it has a Latin inscription on it, it's an image of the goddess, and translated from Latin it says, this is supposed to be a king speaking, or former king, which king stands for any ego, and it says, it has these words in Latin, the first word is, I shall reign. The next word says, I reign, to reign, to have a, to reign a kingdom. I shall reign, I reign. I have reigned, I have lost the kingdom. <laughs> the normal sequence of events. Old age is a great opportunity for that, unfortunately missed in many, many cases, tragically missed the opportunity as old age comes, approaches, and then you enter old age, uh, proximity of death, loss of physical abilities, of social status, retired, who am I when I no longer have that title, my work. All these things are great opportunities for going deeper. And what we are attempting to do now is getting as many books and other material out to old people's homes everywhere and also hospices and hospitals and so on. Because those are great places where spiritual transformation could happen. So the important thing then is sense your presence the presence of you, which is not the person, something deeper. That is consciousness, being aware of itself. And then you do no long you no longer need a narrative to tell you who you are. Free of 
that conceptual sense of self. And this telling yourself a story in your mind about your life that also goes out of the window. My life. This is what it has come to. All those illusions that I had, the, all those wonderful ideas I had when I was 20. Oh. Now, you may well still be at the peak of your success, worldly success, and that's fine. Why not enjoy it? It's not who you are, so you better go into the presence because it doesn't last. With it also comes the wonderful ability to appreciate other human beings, what they can do, what they know, how they look, without feeling diminished by appreciating the external things connected to, to another human being. The ego can't do that, because if the ego appreciates something, it might pretend because it wants something from you, but if the ego appreciates something, it feels diminished. If you meet somebody who obviously looks so much better than you, and uh, the ego feels diminished by that. So sometimes it tries to say something critical about that person in order to restore the injured sense of self. It's, it's absurd, but that's how it works. But when you come from presence, you can look at a beautiful form of a human being and appreciate that and feel it's so beautiful. or the achievements of another human being, to appreciate their achievements. Great, this, what wonderful things that this person can do. It's so wonderful. I would never be able to do that. And yet, the fact that you would never be able to do that, because perhaps you're not strong enough, or you're not inclined in that particular direction, does not diminish anything of you. So the appreciation of others then comes in, and it's a lovely thing. I even, I even appreciate when I occasionally see people getting into their Ferrari, and of course, usually they are, their ego walks in, is walking with them, because it, and so the car, and well, usually it's in red color, just to make sure that everybody notices. <laughs> <coughs> And I actually, I love that thing too. It's, it's, a, it's a beautiful thing that somebody built and okay, and this ego is enjoying himself, that's okay. And you may find that sometimes very creative people, there are some who, are, who have no ego about their creations. They, are, they do not derive their identity from what they create. Others are, have fairly big egos, that happens too. I believe the greatest creators in this world don't have an ego about that. Maybe, maybe they have it somewhere else but not around that. And, and that sometimes means that, that they continue to be creative. So sometimes you see this modesty, which is lack of ego in people who have created something really great. Composers, poets, even some scientists like Einstein, never developed an ego around what he came up with, the incredible realization about 
space and time. But he, he, he never developed this ego as I, I created that. You just, there was very, a relatively little conceptual self. Just. <laughs> and he found it absurd that he had become one of the most famous people on the planet, even in his lifetime. He just couldn't, it's so weird. And he talked about the gap between what people think of me and who I am is just incredible. <laughs> and by the way, that's the last thing, the that's also the place where you can manifest out of the power of presence. If, you, if that presence, if you're linked into that presence, see what the universe wants to, because that presence is the presence of consciousness. Does, does, it, does it want to create something through you? Perhaps it does. But in that presence, Everything is already present in, a un, in an undifferentiated state. So whatever it is that you create externally is like the diluted form of something that in its essence, its concentrated non-form is already there in you. So whatever you can possibly create is already present on some level, on, the, on a deeper level. There have been composers who created the most incredible pieces of music, and many of them said that it, they listened as if it, it, it came out of that place of depths already fully, fully created, and they just wrote it down. <laughs> 